right, um, Daniel chapter 7, and um, look down there at verse 9. Daniel chapter 7, verse number 9, the Bible says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So what's that mean? That means the thrones now are no longer in charge. They've been cast down. They've been made sub in subjection to another throne. And we know what throne that's going to be. He said, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. So there's the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne in Jerusalem, after the second coming, uh, there he is on the throne and uh, uh, all the other thrones are in subjection to him. Amen. There's coming a day on this earth when the President of the United States is going to have to answer, if the, if the United States is still around, right. they're going to have to answer to Jesus Christ. Amen. The King of England or the Queen of England, whoever it is, is going to have to answer to the Lord Jesus Christ because his throne is going to be higher than their throne. Amen. All thrones will be in subjection to Jesus Christ. Now this is going to happen before very long. Um, I've heard it all my Christian life. I've been saved since 1980. And uh, I've heard it all my Christian life. You know, the Lord's coming, the Lord's coming. I'm disappointed every day that He doesn't come. But just because He hasn't come yet doesn't mean He's not coming. He is coming. And when he comes, uh, he's not going to be the meek and lowly Galilean. Right. He's not going to be the sweet little babe in the manger. And uh, he's coming back as a roaring lion. Amen. And he's coming back with fire in his heart, buddy. And fire is going to be coming out of his mouth. And sharp two-edged sword, and we know what that is. That's the Word of God going to be coming out of his mouth. Yep. He's going to be trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. you remember that song that this woman wrote back in the Civil War? talking about the Yankees coming down and stomping the rebels. Well, that's all about Jesus Christ. That's Scripture, uh, where He's trampling out the vintage. In other words, He's stomping on the grapes. And as I told you this morning, when He comes through there, the blood is going to be so high that Him sitting on a horse, His own vesture, His robe will be dipped in the blood. That's three feet of blood in that valley over there. So it's going to be a rough time. It's going to be a rough time. And he says, And I beheld the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Now, he's not going to look like he did when he was here on this earth. Uh, he's going to look like the glorified Jesus Christ. He's not going to look like he did when he was a carpenter here on this earth. The Bible said his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wills as burning fire, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Now go over there to Revelation. Revelation chapter 20, where we read this morning. This is not a secret that the Lord is talking about. This is a very, very important judgment that's going to happen. And he says over there in verse 11, Revelation 20, verse 11, he said, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose, earth the, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. All right? The, the heavens are going to be gone. The Bible said in Peter that the heavens are going to be melted in a fervent heat. It's going to be melted in a fervent heat. And God says over and over again, He says it in the Old Testament, He says it in the New, that God's going to take the universe and fold it up like a garment. So when He says here in verse 11, I saw a great white throne and Him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, uh, when the Lord does that, there's going to be no universe. There's going to be no stars, no planets, nothing. He's going to meld all that. And the only thing left out there is going to be that great white throne. And Jesus Christ, the Ancient of Days, is going to sit on that throne. And the books, notice here, verse 11, And there was found no place for them. Look at verse 12. And I saw the dead, 
small and great. Now, if you're a Christian, that's not you. Because if you're a Christian, you've accepted Jesus Christ. You were not only baptized into His death, but you were also were baptized into His resurrection. So you're not dead anymore. You're alive. So the dead does not apply to Christians. Christians won't be at this judgment as participants. Then he says there, he said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. Notice that. Did you see that? And line that up with Daniel chapter 7. He said, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. So what's going to happen is, when Jesus Christ comes back, and the heaven and earth have fled away and been melted, and the only throne out there, the only thing out there is the great white throne, and Jesus Christ sitting on it, every dead thing will come up. All the unsaved from, from uh, Adam all the way to the end of the millennium are going to come up and stand before God. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. You think about all the people that have died on the sea. Uh, when the Titanic went down over there, just off Nova Scotia, there were 1,500 people that went out to their death. There were 29 people went out to their death in 1975, November the 10th, about 7.20 in the, in the uh, evening, and they went out to meet God. And right now, their bodies are still trapped in that ship out there on Lake Superior. Their bodies are still there. Uh, and Lake Superior is so cold that the bodies don't deteriorate. They just harden, and they're still there. But one of these days, God's going to call all the dead, all the unsaved up, and they're going to come out of the sea. They're going to come out of hell. All the people that have died and went to hell since Adam, hell is going to give it up. And all the dead people, all the dead that have died throughout these 7,000 years are going to stand before God and be judged. Notice this. He said, uh, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened. I told you this morning, I believe the books is this book right here. This is one book, but it's made up of 66 books. So this is the book, I believe, with all my heart, that God is going to judge mankind out of. This book right here. And he says, uh, and they were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and every man was judged according to their works. Notice this. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So what God's going to do at the end of this judgment, those dead are going to come up and stand before God and have an opportunity to accuse God and justify themselves and say, God, you're wrong about this. And when that thing's over with, he takes them all and he says, depart from me, I never knew you. And he casts them into the lake of fire. And that's an interesting thing. It's more than interesting. It's astounding. And that judgment is going to be the last judgment that we find in the Bible. As I told you this morning, there are five major judgments in the Bible. And this is the last one of the five. And he settles all accounts, as I've preached this morning, he settles all accounts at this great and dreadful day. So <clears throat> the Bible said in Acts chapter 17 verse 31. He said because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world by righteousness. By that man whom he hath ordained. Whereof he hath given assurance unto all men. In that he hath raised him from the dead. So we know who the judge is going to be. It's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to judge every man according to his works. Now, brethren, you think about that just for a minute. Just the works thing. Every man on the face of this earth is going to be judged according to his works. Now, you think about your life. Some of you young people, you don't have to think too hard. You don't have many years to think about. But some of us older folk, we know uh, what life holds. And we know what a person can get into in their life. Get into much wickedness. And God's going to judge the dead according to their works. Now, you and I were judged as sinners at Calvary. And because we trusted Jesus Christ as our Savior, God gave us His righteousness. Amen. And we're saved. 
And if you're not saved here tonight, that's how you get out of this final judgment. You trust the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you and was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You trust Him with all your heart. Why? Because if you don't, then you've got to try to get to heaven on your own righteousness, your own goodness. You can't do it. Uh, God gave man over there in the Old Testament, He gave him the Ten Commandments. But actually, there's 600 of them. If you read Genesis through Deuteronomy, there's 600 commandments, over 600. But the ten major ones. Number one, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. Do you do that? Do you think anybody's done that? Apart from Jesus Christ? No. You don't love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You're supposed to. And then if that's not enough, he says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The first commandment takes care of the first four of the ten. The last commandment, love thy neighbor as thyself, takes care of the last six. Now, just on that basis, you're going to be judged on your works. The problem is, is you were born a sinner. When you came into this world, you came in as a son of Adam. And as a son of Adam, you are a sinner. And because you are a sinner, you'll have to be judged for that sin. Sin's got to be taken care of. Your sin, my sin, everybody's sin has to be dealt with. It's got to be dealt with. And there's only one way to deal with sin, and that's go through the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. If you don't do that, then you have to justify yourself before God and say, God, I've never done anything that bad. And God says, uh, the thought of fool- my, he says, my word says the thought of foolishness is sin. You ever had a foolish thought? Well, then you're a sinner. The Bible says, God will say, the Bible says, my word says, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Have you ever done anything that wasn't right? Then you're a sinner. You can't get around it. Every man is a sinner. Every one of us. I don't care who you are, where you come from, who your parents were. We're all in the same ship. We're all sinners And because we're sinners, we need a Savior because we cannot save ourselves. Now, for the last 6,000 years, man has been living upon this earth. And every day, they say every second and a half, somebody goes out into eternity. Somebody dies on this earth. You think about that. For the last 6,000 years, all these people that have died and went out to meet God, and all the people that have died went to hell because they rejected God, they're going to have to come and give an account of themselves to God at that last day. Now, I want to show you this so you'll get an idea where you're at. Here you are, Jesus Christ dies on the cross, and... uh, He dies for sinners right here. And then on the third day, he rises from the dead and goes back to heaven. So he dies on the cross and then he resurrects and goes back to heaven. After he leaves, the church age begins. And the church age lasts for 2,000 years. You say, but preacher, it's already 2023. Well, that's what we think it is, but it's not right. Why, your calendar's been changed over and over again through history. People don't know what day it is. People don't know what year it is. But I guarantee you the church age, according to the Word of God, will only last for 2,000 years, and that's where you're at right now. And then at the end of the church age, you've got the rapture of the church. Now, we know what the rapture is. The rapture is the catching away of the church. God calls up the church. He says, come up hither. And all the people that are Christians and have trusted Christ as their Savior will go up in that rapture and they'll be changed in the moment of the twinkling of an eye. They'll be changed that quick. And they'll go up to meet Jesus Christ in the clouds. 
And we'll meet Him there, and then we'll follow Him up on. The Bible opens a door in heaven, Revelation chapter 4, and we go on up into heaven. But while we're up there going through the judgment seat of Christ, down here on the earth, they'll be going through the great tribulation. And in the great tribulation, you'll have uh, three main characters. You'll have the false prophet. You'll have the beast. And then you'll have the son of perdition, the unholy trinity, just like God in heaven is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the devil's going to have the false prophet, the beast, and the son of perdition. And they're going to go through that thing for three and a half years, and they're going to get through the end of that thing, and then something's going to happen. Jesus Christ is going to descend from the heaven, and we're coming with him. Jesus Christ and the church. And we're coming down with Him. And when the Lord comes down, this is Armageddon and all that stuff that you've heard about all your life. That's when all this happens. But Jesus Christ comes down. He goes up the King's Highway over there in the Middle East. He comes up the King's Highway. Uh, he goes through Armageddon. And He goes uh, uh, through Armageddon, kills all the armies of the, of the world. Then he goes to the Mount of Olives, gets off his horse, and the Mount of Olives splits. And then he gets on his horse, comes back down into Jerusalem, and goes through the Eastern Gate. Then he goes on up to the uh, Temple Mount. And as he goes into the Temple Mount, he goes in there and he sits down on his throne in the Holiest of Holies. And uh, he becomes the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All the thrones are put in subjection to his throne. And that thing lasts for 1,000 years. Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. And that thing lasts for 1,000 years. Now for us, it's wonderful. I can't wait. Yes, sir. I, I'm serious. I long for the day when, you remember that prayer when the, Lord, when the disciples said to the Jesus Christ, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, all right. He said, here it is. Pray like this. He said, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You remember that prayer? I long for what he said. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. During this period of time, that's what it's going to be when God's will is being done on this earth just like it's being done in heaven. And that's going to be a wonderful day. That's going to be a wonderful time. All the people that have, have come through the tribulation, that have made it through the tribulation and gone into that, they are going to be made to do right. You know how people hate to be made to do anything? You think of a thousand years of Jesus Christ telling them they've got to live right. And they've got to worship Him. They hate Him now. They hate Him so bad now they can't stand it. They hate the Word of God. They hate God. They despise Christians. You think about when Jesus Christ is on the earth and all of us are here on the earth with Him. Christians for the last 2,000 years, we're reigning on the earth with Him. They are going to be sick to death of Jesus Christ at the end of the 1,000 years. Well, Satan, Satan is loose from his prison and he comes up at the end of the 1,000 years. And he mounts a rebellion against uh, Jesus Christ there at Jerusalem. Well, fire falls down from heaven and he burns them up, you know. All that takes place. And then he melts the, the universe and he folds it up like a garment. And then out here in the heavens stands a great white throne. And Jesus Christ is going to be on that throne and He's going to be reigning and there He is and every man, woman, boy and girl that has ever lived for the last 7,000 years is going to have to come and stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne. Now that's how the Bible lays it out. 
That, you want to know what's going to happen? That's what's going to happen. Now, this thing right here, the rapture, nobody knows when that's going to happen. That could take place tonight. It really could. I wish it would. But I can tell you this, if it does take place tonight and you're not saved and you're not a Christian, you're going to stay down here and you're going to go through this thing. And in that day, you won't be able to just trust Christ as your Savior. You'll have to not only trust Christ, but you'll also have to keep the commandments and endure unto the end. Now, that's not what you have to do now. All you have to do now is put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. God will save you. You become His Son, and that's a done deal, and it's forever. But if you have to go into this mess, you're in trouble. Amen. You're in bad trouble. Right. You say, oh, well, I'll endure to the end in the tribulation period. Why, you won't even, you're not even man enough now to trust Christ. You're not even man enough now to put your faith and trust in Christ and get saved what in the world makes you think you'll be able to endure into the end in this thing? When the devil has absolute full control, you can't do it. You can't do it. So what we're talking about tonight, and what I talked about this morning, is this event right here. This whole thing lasts 7,000 years. From here to here. 7,000 years. That's the extent of man's history. Man is going to be here for 7,000 years and that's it. That's all he's going to be here. Now here you are right here. You're in the year 6,000. There were 4,000 years before Jesus Christ shows up. And there are 2,000 years since Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So that's 6,000. All this right here is going to happen in the last 1,000 years. So you're right at the end. You're at the doors. I mean, you're right at the jumping off place. You better be ready to go. Now, the horrible thing about this is that last judgment. And that last judgment is going to be a horrible, terrible thing. Now, you and I as Christians, we're going to be there. We'll not be participants, but we will be there. Because wherever Jesus Christ is at, that's where we'll be. We'll be with him. And we'll be there. But I want you to notice something, uh, and I'll get to it in a little while, but Jesus Christ says that He wipes the tears away from our eyes. You remember that? How many remember that? God's going to wipe all tears from our eyes. You know when that happens? It doesn't happen until after this is over with. So you're going to be standing there at the great white throne judgment, and you're going to see your friends, and you're going to see your family members, they're going to come up and be judged and you're going to have to sit there and watch it. And tears will run down your face because you watch not only them, but everybody else being cast off into the lake of fire that burns forever and ever. The Bible says, we read this morning, that it burns day and night forever and ever and ever. Hell, the lake of fire will last as long as God lives. Now that's where everybody that leaves this world without Jesus Christ is headed. Everybody, if you leave this world tonight, if something happens to you before you get home tonight and you're not saved, then this is the next time we'll see you. Right there. This is the next time we'll see you. We'll see you again, but it'll be right here. There'll be no hope then. No hope then. I want to ask you, are you saved? If you were to die tonight, do you know that you'd go to heaven? Well, if you don't know, you can know. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 12 and 13, you can know if you have eternal life. Why don't you know? You should know. Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you realized that you're a sinner on your way to hell? Have you realized that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures? Do you realize that if you'll put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, He will save you and that will be forever? That's what's going to happen. Now, when I talk about this great day, it's going to be a horrible day because there's basically no hope. Can you imagine a, a man having to stand there and tell God that God was wrong? Well, he can say it all he wants to, but he's got to prove it. Now, how are you going to prove that God is wrong when He's the one that gave you the law? He's the one that created you. He's the one that made the rules. He's the one that did all this. How are you going to stand there and prove that God is wrong? 
You can't because he's not wrong. And he's going to be justified when those people condemn him. He's still going to be justified. Now this is a horrible time. God's payday train pulls into the station. And it's going to pull in one of these days. And if you remember what the Bible said over there in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. The Bible says, And it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. You've got to be judged. Saved or lost, in or out, heaven or hell, you've got to be judged. You're going to go to judgment. Have you ever thought about that, Christian? Have you ever really just sat down and thought about the fact that one of these days you're going to have to stand before Jesus Christ and be judged by Him for your service? You've already took, took, taken care of your sins back at Calvary. When you trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, Jesus Christ pronounced you clean and justified, and you become His Son. You're no longer guilty. But do you realize as a Christian, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, where the brother read this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you've got to stand there before Jesus Christ by yourself. I won't be able to stand there with you. You won't be able to stand for me. Mom and dad won't be able to stand there with you, but you'll stand there and be judged at what kind of Christian you were, why you did what you did. And you'll stand there and gold, silver, and precious stone, that's the good things you've done for the Lord. Wood, hay, and stubble are the bad things that you've done for the Lord. The fire will hit both of those, and the only thing that's left is what you'll be rewarded for. Now, you won't go to hell if you end up with nothing. You're still a child of God. You're saved. That's been taken care of. But you want some rewards. You want some rewards. And that day, I promise you, you want some rewards. But what I want to get across to you tonight is, now listen to me. You are going to judgment. I hope that keeps you awake tonight. You're going to be judged if you're a Christian, Christian, your life as a Christian is going to be judged by Jesus Christ Himself. And there'll be no mistakes. There'll be no errors. You're going to be judged. But if you're here and you're lost tonight, you'll wind up right here. And you'll be judged right here for your works. And then you'll be cast off into the lake of fire, and that's where you'll be forever and ever and ever, and ever, and ever. It's a horrible thing to think about. My heart breaks. Jesus Christ preached on hell an average of at least twice a year and a little over twice a year. I can't hardly do it. I don't like to preach on hell. I just don't like to preach on hell. I don't like the idea of hell. I wish it wasn't there, but it is there, and people go there. Let me tell you something. Just as sure as people go to heaven... They go to hell. And you've got to get that. Everybody got to go to judgment. And you've got to be judged. Now, how will the Lord find you, Christian? Will the Lord find you trying to do something for Him? Will the Lord look at your record and say, Well, He, he tried to do something for me here. Uh, he did something for me over here. He tried to win a soul here. He did win a soul uh, he, and another time, you know, he just did this for himself and he did that for himself. Uh, he wasn't really doing it for me and, you know, wood, hay, and stubble. And then unsaved, if you're here and not saved tonight, can I ask you a question? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when you have to stand there and look at Jesus Christ eyeball to eyeball? He can read your mind and your thoughts. He knows every breath you take. He knows the number of hairs that you have on your head. What are you going to do then? There'll be nothing you can do but say, Lord, thou art righteous and I am guilty. And off into the lake of fire you'll go. Why do that? Why do that? Why, why, why do that? You don't have to do that. Why not just realize that you're a sinner and admit it and then realize and believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose again. He's the Son of God, and He'll save you if you'll ask Him. Why not just do that? You say, well, I, 
I worked with a guy that one time told me, he says, well, I'm not going to get saved. And he was 60-something years old. I'm not going to get saved. I'm just going to endure to the end. See, that guy knew more Bible or as much Bible as I did, and him, him unsaved. I'm just going to endure to the end of the great tribulation period. That old boy died a few years later. Never did get saved, as far as I know. Why not just settle it tonight? Why not just put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ tonight and settle it? And because once you settle it, it's settled forever. You don't ever have to do it again. He becomes your Savior. You become His Son. And you'll forever be with Him. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. Because if you don't, this is where you're going. You're going to the great white throne judgment. Now even the Bible talks about the judgment seat of Christ, which is the judgment for the Christian. The Bible calls that a terror. He says, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. He just talked about the judgment seat of Christ. It's going to be a terrible thing for us Christians. Just think what kind of judgment it's going to be for the unsaved when there's no hope. No hope. The judgment seat of Christ, when you think about the place of judgment, it's just an empty space. The heaven have gone away. They've melted with the fervent heat. The earth is gone away. God has folded it all up and done away with. There's nothing there but a great white throne in a great, vast, empty place. We call it outer space. God calls it the firmament over there in Genesis chapter 1. It's an empty place. And right now, God has filled it with stars and planets and meteors and uh, all those things, God has filled it with that. But one of these days, He's going to burn it all up. He's going to fold it all up. And He's going to put His throne out there in an empty place. The universe explodes. Everything's gone. People are just standing before the throne of God. And there they are. That's what's going to happen. The Bible said in 2 Peter 3.10, He said, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And that's what he said in 2 Peter 3.10. God's going to just get rid of everything, and the only thing that will be there is a great empty space with a great white throne. With the Ancient of Days sitting on the throne. He says, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like a smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. Isaiah 51, verse 6. Brethren, the Lord tells you over and over and over again, He's going to destroy this universe. He's going to destroy it. The universe, the universe as we know it, is getting old. The Bible says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and the years shall not fail. This universe is getting old, and one of these days God's going to get rid of it. When you look at the thing, it's just going to be a... Vast empty space, all of it's gone. All these beautiful stars that we see at night, they're gone. This beautiful earth that we live in, it's gone. And all the people of the last 7,000 years that have rejected God and His Word and His Son are going to be standing out there before Him. I hope you're not there. I really hope you're not there. And you think about the participants. You've got a judge, and we already saw that. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said in John 5, he said, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment to the Son. So it's going to be Jesus Christ who does the judging. Not only that, the Word of God will be the judge. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12. He said, And the book was opened, and another, he said, The books were opened, and another book was opened. And they were judged out of the things which were written in the books. You're going to be judged by the Word of God. This Bible is going to judge you at the great white throne. You're going to stand before the great white throne, and God's going to say, All right, turn to Romans chapter 3. And then He's going to say, Turn to Psalm 51. 
and over and over again, and he's going to slap you with that word. Pop, 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 pop. And I believe that every, every unsaved person will stand there and they'll remember in their mind the time when someone tried to give them a track and they took the track and threw it on the ground. I remember Brian Donovan telling this story. He was down there in Pensacola and that guy that sang Cats in the Cradle, I don't remember his name, but he sang Cats in the Cradle. He was down there in concert one time. Brother Donovan's down there passing out tracks. Well, at the end of the concert, the door was open, so Brother Donovan walked in and there was that guy sitting up there signing autographs. And he got up there and Brother Donovan waited in line. When he got up there, he handed the man a track. And the guy took the track and was going to sign it and looked at it. He said, what is this? No, he said, oh, it's a gospel track. And he just threw it on the ground. And do you realize within two years that man was dead? I wonder, did he ever get saved? I'll tell you this, if he didn't get saved, we'll see him again. Brother Donovan will see him again. All those people you worked with that reject Jesus Christ. Oh, I've worked with a bunch of them. I've worked with a bunch of them, sat on a scaffold top one time, on the third shift, about 3 o'clock in the morning, trying to deal with this guy about his soul, a good guy, nice guy. And he said, Preacher, I just can't. He said, I'm just having too much fun right now. I just can't get saved. I just can't do it right now. And within six months, that young man, my friend, had a motorcycle wreck and died right there on Highway 27 in Harriman, Tennessee, and he died alone without Jesus Christ. And he went right straight to hell. You say, preacher, how do you know that? Because I know the word of God. I know what the Bible says about it. Amen. Who are the defendants? Well, it'll be the lost man from Adam through the millennium. He said in 2 Peter 3, 7, he said, But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So what God's going to do, as I said this morning, He's going to settle all the accounts. You think about that, the billions and billions of men that have lived upon this earth in the last 6,000 years. One by one, they'll all stand and they'll come up and stand before Jesus Christ. And the Lord will say, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. That good man, that your neighbor, that you find, he's a fine man. I know a lot of good men that aren't saved. But the Lord will say the same thing to them as he's going to say to Adolf Hitler. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. The billions and billions of men that will stand before that throne. Then, you notice that that thing happens after the millennium. We're not there. We'll be there because Jesus Christ is there. But we'll not be involved. But we'll stand there and watch them. And can I say this to you? These people that you're working with that you know aren't saved, are you trying to witness to them? Are you trying to talk to them about Jesus Christ? Are you trying to get to them and help them to see that without Jesus Christ they'll die and go to hell? Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Do you realize that if you don't get through to that fellow, or somebody doesn't get through to it, one of these days he's going to leave this world and the next time you see him will be at the great white throne judgment. And you'll see that guy. And I hope when you see him, you'll say, well, praise the Lord, I witnessed to him. I tried. To, I tried. I tried. Wouldn't it be a horrible thing you get up there and you see one of your friends come by, one of your workmates, one of your family members, and you see him come up there to be judged and you say, oh, no, I never witnessed to him. I never talked to him. I never did. That's when the tears begin to flow. The tears will come down our face because God doesn't wipe the tears away until after the great white throne judgment. You better start caring about some people. And you hear this tonight, if you're not saved, you need to understand something. God didn't promise you one more minute 
Not one. I know what God can do. I've seen God take the young. I've seen him take the old. I've seen him take the healthy. I've seen him take the infirm. I had a man die in my arms on the side of a highway. I had a man die in my arms on a golf course just out enjoying the day. And the next thing you knew, he was on the ground gasping for air, and I'm behind him trying to encourage him to keep breathing, and he just gets lighter and lighter, and and then he just quits breathing. I say I know what happens. You can leave this world just like that. The fallen angels will be there. The angels that followed the devil, they'll be there, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 3. says, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Jude chapter 1 verse 6 he said and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he hath reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day those fallen angels will be at the great white throne judgment and will be involved in their judgment and the Lord God himself will be there he'll answer all the accusations And he'll answer them with the word of God. Well, what's the penalty at the great white throne? It's the second death, as we read in Revelation 20, verse 14 and 15. The second death, as I told you this morning, is the death of the soul. I believe this. I believe that once a man becomes a living soul, he never ceases to be a living soul. The body quits and dies. It goes back to the ground. And at death, the Bible said, the spirit goes back to God who gave it. But the soul of man, that thing lives forever, ever somewhere. It'll either live with God forever in heaven, or it'll die with the Satan forever and ever in hell, in the lake of fire. But it never ceases to be. It's not physical. It can't burn up. So it just burns and burns and burns and burns. They're cast into the outer darkness of the lake of fire. He said in Matthew 8 and verse 12, Jesus Christ said, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not going to be a pleasant playground, as that rock and roll guy said. Uh, May we have as much fun in hell as we had getting there. Well, you won't. It's going to be a place of torment, a place of horrible pain. Thirst, a terrible thing. Souls of the unsaved will be changed to match their father in heaven. The Bible says in Isaiah 66 and verse 24, and he said, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring to all flesh. It makes sense that if we're going to be like our God in heaven, and we are, we're going to take on His image. What stands to reason that if we're going to be like our Father in heaven, then the unsaved will be like their Father in hell. You say, is Satan their father? That's what it says in in John 8, 44. Jesus Christ looked at those unsaved Pharisees and He said, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He told them, he said, your father's the devil. And you know what the devil is? We read it this morning. He's the dragon. He's the serpent. And the lowest form of a serpent is a what? It's a worm. And you know what that Bible said over there in Isaiah? He said, the worms are under thee. Talking about the devil when he goes to hell. He says, the worms are under thee and the worms cover thee. And they're asking the devil, why are you here? I thought you were great and powerful. Why are you here? Brother, it's a horrible situation. It's a horrible thought. Now here's some particulars, and I'll be done. Satan will be the prosecuting attorney. That's what he says in Daniel 7, 11. 
Uh, he's going to be the prosecuting attorney. You see a, a, a picture of this over there in Zechariah chapter 3 and verses 1 to 5. The lost man will have no advocate. He'll have no lawyer. But he'll have a prosecuting attorney, and that'll be the devil. And he will be judged out of the Bible. He will be judged out of the Word of God. He's responsible for the Word of God. The Bible said about the Word of God in Hebrews 4.12, he says, For the Word of God is quick. That means alive. He said, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and and of the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You're going to be judged out of that book. Now listen, lost man. Listen, lost woman. When you die, this book, will be what God judges you out of. This book. And the condemned will cry as they go into the lake of fire. They'll cry, Amen. Philippians chapter 2 verse 10, he said that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven and things of earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Listen, everybody's going to admit that Jesus Christ is right. Even the unsaved, right before they go off into the lake of fire, will be hollering, Amen! Amen! And we'll weep and we'll cry as we watch them go off into hell at the great white throne. Revelation 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither that shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Yep, God's going to wipe our tears away, but He's not going to do it until after this is over with. I think it'll be a great shame for us. It'll be great pain and torment for us to stand there and watch somebody go off into hell that we never tried to to witness to. And there'll be nothing we can do. And if you're not saved, there'll be nothing you can do. Now that's the great white throne. I've preached two messages on it today. And you need to understand something. It's just as true as Calvary. The great white throne's going to happen just as sure as Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and was buried and rose again. The lake of fire is out there and it's just waiting for that great day. What about you, Christian? If you don't get anything else out of this message, you ought to get this. Your job is not done. There are people that you're around that need Jesus Christ. And if you don't help them to understand how to get saved, then what good are you? What good are you? You're going to be judged. You're going to be judged. And if you're here and you're not saved tonight, can I say this to you? Please don't go to hell. Please don't go to the great white throne judgment. Please don't do it. There's no reason for you to do it. It's a foolish, foolish option. It's an option you don't have to take. You can trust Jesus Christ as your Savior tonight. And God will save you. And and you'll be saved forevermore. But God didn't promise you one more heartbeat. Don't count on a long life because you don't know if you're going to get one. I know many that didn't. Are you saved tonight? If you're not saved, why don't you come tonight? Trust Christ as your Savior. Every head bowed, every eye closed, they come get a song. On a hill far away.